<laughs> I I did I, I did a lot of stuff. I did a battle rap with John Cena. I did um, uh, what else did I do? I did the sexy Kurt when I imitated Shawn Michaels. Yep. Uh, there there was like I'll give you some of the, something that I did. For example, I was such an idiot. Like I I may I always fucked up so I uh, like I was there was one night where I was supposed to wrestle Rey Mysterio I was like Rey Mysterio you're a boy in a man's world and I'm a man who loves to play with boys <laughs> and I go no no that's not what I meant to say and then I would say something else and that would fuck me up too I'd be like no not that either so I fans got to make fun of me and laugh with me uh, it was oh, yeah. it was a really cool relationship I had with them at one I point, was the bad guy but they kind of loved me yeah. you know at one point in time Tony was going to get hired by the WWE but he didn't want to move to Connecticut he was going okay. to be one of the writers yeah like tell that story cuz it's a cra- kind of a crazy story we almost we almost you, lost you, you. you have to yeah. move there you have to yeah you have to move now, there now some of them don't live there anymore but but they have to go up there like right after TV and stay up there for the whole week right and they only go home for one day yeah so in Connecticut, which is absolute hell. And expensive as shit. Middle of nowhere. And yeah, I somehow I can't even remember. It was so long ago, but I got this meeting with them. Somebody wanted to talk with me. They heard that I was a pro wrestling fan and I just destroyed at this meeting and I gave them a bunch of crazy ideas that I just had in the back of my head forever. Stuff for The Undertaker to do, stuff for this, stuff for that. And uh I killed it at this meeting and they offered me a full-time job. But at the time I, I was already three, four, five years into stand-up comedy and working at the store. I devoted everything to stand-up comedy. Right. So there's no way I could go backwards, especially for like a job with a boss and bosses and word on the street. Like Patrice O'Neill, a great comedian, took the job. And famously, anybody who takes the job, they're like, it, it's hell. It's fun. I didn't know Patrice <laughs> took that job. Oh, he was doing it. He was really? in it. Oh, yeah. He went to Connecticut the whole deal? Well, they pay you so good. It's like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars because they make so much money. And the writers are so important because they're putting out so much content. Two, three shows a week, pay-per-views, all of these big, long, drawn-out storylines like week after week. And yeah, uh, they write six six months ahead of time. I and mean, they rewrite the day of. Yep. So it's a nightmare. Vince will go, I hate it. Change everything the day of, famously, the, an hour before. And as a real fan. That's happened many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you hear these things, and it's like, God. I, you know, I, it would have been cool if it would have been cool. What I mean by that is like, if I could do it during the day and then take a train to New York City and do stand up, that would have been fine. But it's not that kind of job. It's, we need you in the office right now. Where are you? That type of right. thing. Right. So you could have had a gig. You would have had to cancel your gig. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. but Stephanie yeah, Stephanie McMahon fired him six times. Yeah, according yeah, that, to this article I'm reading about, that's what it they right do. Now. They who, fire you. Who got fired six times? Patrice, because he had stand-up gays conflicting with his <laughs> with his WWE stuff, and said, he, and they hired him back. Yeah, yeah it says Stephanie <laughs> incredulously fired him six times. Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. I had no idea Patrice did that. Mm-hmm. I never heard that story. Yeah, I can't believe I haven't mentioned it. Before. I can't believe I didn't know. Yeah, no, I mean that's a it was it. The money, especially then, I mean, I was so broke, it was crazy for me to turn down the job. I mean, I was fucking starving. This is like right before I start writing on the roast and and, and on television, right before. And I'm not headlining yet. Couldn't sell a ticket to my name. Just some comedy store door guy. So, like, (laughs) I should have, on paper, I am a moron for not taking the job. But it was a huge gamble that, thank God, paid off. Yeah, well, you believed in yourself. But yeah, I mean, it also would have been fun. It'd be fun to like have a clone of me and live that life for a bit because I think I would have done some really crazy stuff. I think I would have you worked my way up really yeah. fast and probably been. Yeah. Oh, you would have been a mastermind at that yeah. stuff because you're such a fan. Yeah. And you're so good at writing shit for other people, too. Yeah. You know, Brian Gewertz, that, that's what he was. He was a huge fan. Um, I don't know if you know who Brian is. Huh. Well, he's he's the one that he wrote for The Rock, for me, for Chris Jericho, uh, Edge and Christian. He he would write for guys he had uh, certain chemistry with. Right. And uh, he actually wrote a book this past year, and uh, he's had a lot of success. Actually, you know who hired him? T- uh, stole him from WWE, The Rock. Uh, the Rock, he works for his production company now. Oh, nice. Yeah, Seven Bucks Productions. I that's mean, where Brian is now. And that's what you were part of. This guy was part of Peak 
entertainment. Yeah. You look at Cena, The Rock, Kurt Angle. These, this was all every Monday, every Sunday, every Thursday, every Friday. That was, I mean, everybody's a star. They stayed yeah, stars. Hogan's movie career, while it, you know he was in some stuff, it was always like you know kind of low budget <laughs> tonight on the USA Network, a uh, Hulk right. Hogan movie. Whereas <laughs> you know The Rock is fucking. I'm, oh, what is yeah. he's number one, right? Yes, yes, and Cena and Batista are kicking ass. Too. Yeah, Batista yeah. exactly, and this is all his class. These are his people. Batista's doing some real movies. Man. Yeah. He is. He's challenging himself. That yeah. Glass Onion movie. Yeah. That's yeah. a great fucking movie, <laughs> yeah. man. He was great in that. Yeah, I, he's 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 talented. I, Very talented. You know, it's crazy, man. He he was like a. I guess he was a doorman for a bar in, in D.C., and, you know, he, he was always big, jacked-up dude, and someone came up to him and said, hey, you should be a pro wrestler. Look at him. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. He's doing, uh, he's doing all these movies and uh, just uh, having a lot of success. And he seems to be okay physically. Like, he's gotten through it physically. Or- I'm really surprised at how well he moves around, considering his age and, you know, yeah. what he's been able to go through, but... It's crazy. I mean, he actually look, He actually is like uh, working out like he's 30 years old. That's I mean, crazy. Yeah, and he's probably, what, 55, 57. He actually is like... Hey, woman, since your man ain't got no heart, why don't you go to my apartment tonight and I'll show you a real man. There you go. What? What? Fuck you. 